Hello, welcome to DIY is my happy place. I'm Amy and today I'm going to talk about what my favorite DIY of all time is. Definitely, there's no doubt about it. The best do-it-yourself project I personally have ever done has to be, without fail, my stairs. You can check that video out and I'll put a link. But my second favorite DIY is the one I'm going to show you today. And it is my cupcake stand. What? A cupcake stand? How can that be your favorite, you ask? Well, there is nothing that I have ever made that I have used more than this cupcake stand. And the fact that I was able to make it for about $20. I figured it out, it's been about seven, eight years since I made mine. And now the construction prices have gone up. And I definitely did some construction dumpster diving in order to find some of the things that I had. But even if you were to pay top dollar and buy everything new, you could do it for under 50 and I'm going to show you how. So let's have some fun. This DIY has to be one of the best, most useful cupcake stands I can even imagine. Definitely worth it. It was three boards that I picked up from Menards, and I even have this. I'll give all the information down below, but with a metal dowel and some washers and bolts, and really a lot of supplies that I picked up from a dumpster. I love dumpster diving, and I don't literally mean from a dumpster, but basically pieces of wood or construction supplies that were no longer needed. Now, to find the center of my first piece of wood, I just took some thread and marked the very center with an X. Then I drilled a hole, a pilot hole, down the middle, and then took a jigsaw to cut a bigger hole. Now, I know this looks very sloppy, and you think, what on earth? But it doesn't have to be fancy because it's going to be completely hit hidden. So I did put holes in all three of my boards and then I got some Mod Podge and some wood glue because I wanted to create a kind of a different look on the wood and also I wanted to reinforce it and I wanted it to be paintable and be able to have some gouges here and there without necessarily knowing because I knew I was going to be transporting this across state lines for a wedding. So basically I put together a mishmash of water, the glue, and some Mod Podge and then I just took some brown paper bags, tore them in pieces, and started dipping it into that glue water mixture and then sticking it down to the wood. I actually ended up doing this on both sides of the wood just to reinforce it because it was a little bit bendable and flimsy. And the reason why I used this type of wood was because I wanted it to be fairly lightweight and movable. Now I picked up some, I don't know, just a little extra pieces of wood and they're left over from a deck build. Cut them down and put little feet on the bottom of them because I wanted to be able to set this down. This is the bottom of my cupcake stand and I wanted to be able to set that down and not have it snag on a tablecloth or scratch any wooden table that it might be set on. And initially I glued these down but then I figured out mm, I'm going to have them a little bit more solid and I'll show you that in a minute. Now for the outer edge I took some cardboard and some tissue paper and I just got some spray mount, spray adhesive, and sprayed that right onto the cardboard and then added some Velcro that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to show you that too in just a minute. Now for this frame to go along the bottom, I just framed out almost like a picture frame for the bottom. Now I picked up some cans and I got these uh, cans of yams from the Dollar Store 
and cut with a Pampered Chef can opener. And it makes it so that it cuts all the way down so the edges aren't sharp and cut the top and the bottom off because I didn't want to get any cuts when I'm putting this together. If you don't have that kind of a can opener, I suppose you could sand down the edges, but definitely you don't want it to be jaggedy. Now, this is a two by four that I got that I cut a hole in with my drill or drilled a hole and then added my dowel and a bolt. Now, the main thing is you need to be able to get that bolt down into the wood. And I actually hammered the bolt down in. Now, initially, you can see this other hole. I tried to just have the bolt, you know, like with another bolt and a washer and just really secure it. But it just kept on spinning. So it was best to hammer it down in. Now, each of my boards, this is what it looks like when they're finished. They all have the holes so the dowel can come up through. I know this is very confusing, but once I start assembling this, you'll see how this is all going to come together. I used the same tissue paper on the outer edges of the cans, and I actually put some of the Velcro on the bottom in case I wanted to do push lights to shine down on the cupcakes. Now, I found that you couldn't really see much of those lights when it was in broad daylight, if you have it as an outdoor party, or even a well-lit venue. So I don't end up using those push uh, lights very often unless it's like an evening affair and it's gonna be a little bit darker. The nice thing about that wash that we put on there, it's very washable and it, I've had these for seven years and each one of these layers just has really held up. Now let me show you the bottom of it once it's all assembled. Remember how I put those four made kind of almost like a frame squared out spot for the bottom and that's what I'm I attached our cardboard skirt with and those are in an inch from the outer edge so that you have a place to be able to grab and move it around without pushing up against the cardboard skirt and then those skirts, I just Velcro out on the outer edge. And that can be changed out depending on what type of decor I'm going for. So this is the main frame on the bottom. And really, as long as those are glued in and screwed in nicely, and you have a solid foundation, the rest of it comes together really pretty easy. Now you can see where I had originally glued my legs, and that definitely was not a solid foundation. So putting four legs on was the key to this, no doubt about it. As you can see, they I just have them so that the skirt is the same level as the legs. And my fancy skirt, real high-tech cardboard and tissue paper. So my total cost for this, each of the boards cost me about $5. I looked at Menards yesterday and they cost about 7 now because of... I don't know, they just cost a little bit more. But let's say they were even 10. That's, you know, I made this whole entire thing for under $50. And I have used this, oh, uh, maybe 25 times. Definitely worth it. And I will continue to use it throughout my lifetime, I'm sure. <laughs> now, what the way that we assemble this is we take our wooden 2x4 and we bring our dowel up through. Now, when this is all assembled, that needs to go all the way flush up to the bottom of our frame. Now, while it's assembling, it's gonna fall down. We put a can down the center, then we add our second layer of our board, and then we put another can. Now, I know this still looks flimsy, but trust me, once we assemble everything, it is solid. Then we put our third tier on. See why it doesn't matter that those holes aren't perfect? The can covers up that very center. So you don't even see what those look like. You don't even know it's a dowel. Basically what we're trying to do is create this to be the background of our cupcake stand. Now I put the bolt on and I'm going to screw it down. Now while I'm assembling this, I just wanted to show it really quickly. But you do need to keep on screwing that bolt until it is level with the top of your can 
and the bottom is all the way up to the bottom of the frame. That is how you're going to get it secure. Now, I use this plastic plate in order to have a, a little bit of a catch between the two washers. So we have the bolt, and I didn't screw it all the way to the bottom in while I'm showing this, but you that's what you need to do. You need to make it so that it goes level, have the washer, then the plate, and then another washer, and another bolt. Now, if this was all the way screwed in, how it would be if I was assembling it for an event, then this would be completely level. That plate would be level. Now, if I'm doing this just for a shower or something at our house, then I don't need to have it as secure, and I can leave it like that. Now, I took these foam wreaths that I picked up from the dollar store and I spray painted them white and then add a trim around with some rope and then I have one of these tin stove top lids that I also spray painted white and added some twine around and that is what's going to cover up the bolt or the yeah the bolt and the rod and then you can add some cupcakes to the top with a plate or you can add a cake top. Now, if you look at what it looks like when it's completely assembled, you can see it. this is what it looks like when I don't have the Velcro all the way across. And then once I Velcro it down, the skirt just kind of blends into the background. I like the cream color because it goes with just about anything. And this particular style, you can either bedazzle it up or mellow it out with the rope. So all the only thing that I change now is just the very outer edge and possibly my uh, very top part for the cake. But otherwise, this same cake stand has been used in wedding events, funerals, luncheons, graduation parties, you name it. Anything that you would need cupcakes for, this can be the centerpiece. And the beautiful, this is what it looks like when I used an Ikea metal plate. And somewhere along the lines at one of my venues, someone threw it away or somehow it got lost. So now I just use a regular plastic plate. Now you can make your own cupcakes as we did for the very first event. Or you can buy the cupcakes. This first time that we used it was for my son's outdoor wedding reception. We set everything up and then we hired servers to come and they put the cupcakes out right at the last minute, right before the guests started to arrive. And I cannot believe it. We had more than 400 cupcakes that were we didn't have them all on at all times, but there were plenty of cupcakes. And the nice thing is you can have it be the center and you can put a beautiful cake on the top to be able to, for the bride and groom to cut the cake and a lot of people can access it. This is my second son's wedding. And again, we use the cupcakes stand again. This is another wedding. It can be jazzed up to be very formal or you can even have it uh, look very rustic. That's the beautiful thing about this. Everything goes. And the cupcakes can be the star of the show. So it is definitely worth it. We had a rustic wedding for my third son. And it was in a, an old Quonset barn. Beautiful setting but very rustic and that's when we put the twine on it and we turned them just a little bit the center pieces so that they had different angles and this one we did light up because it was a darker venue and this time I don't even know how many cupcakes we had but plenty and the beautiful thing is everyone can go around and get what cupcake they would like. What do you think? Are you ready to make yourself a cupcake stand? I am telling you Cupcakes never go out of style. Yes, sometimes they become more popular, but they never really go away because who doesn't love a cupcake? And everyone needs a cupcake stand. So give it a try. And if you like what you see here, please subscribe. And don't forget to ring the bell to all. And I will see you again soon.